Alright DBF team, uh, today we're going to be starting the Structures video lecture series. Um, I'm pretty new to this. Uh, I don't typically record videos of myself um, very often, so bear with me. Uh, we'll try to work some of the kinks out and we'll see how this goes. During the fall phase we worked a lot on design, um, which is largely led by the lead team. In the, in the winter we took that design, made a couple of tweaks, and we went into our build phase where it was very hands-on, very interactive. Um, we put a plane together. And now in the spring, what we're going to do, uh, in lieu of competition, is we're going to be taking a look back on all of the choices that were made in the fall and winter quarters and really try to talk you guys through that so you understand some of the engineering uh, behind the uh, design. So this series uh, is going to give you a bit of a primer on uh, AA210, CE220, um, even a bit of AA 331 which is a junior level course. Um, basically by watching this series you should be able to understand some of the key concepts in all of those courses and furthermore know how to apply that um, in an engineering setting like we've been doing all year. And a quick disclaimer, um, I'm not an expert in any of this. I'm a junior I'm in the Aero program. I'm not a grad student. I'm not a professor. Um, but I think it's, it's valuable for you guys to see some of the uh, insights I have um, after going through the courses and also working on a design team so you can see what really is applicable to what we do. We're going to be introducing some of the nomenclature that we're going to be using um, throughout this series. Uh, first and foremost, I'm going to kind of start out with the key concept of um, engineering statics and this is what you're going to start out with in your very first AA210 class. What this means is we're going to be looking at static problems, no motion. Kinematics and dynamics deals with motion, we're looking at things that aren't moving. And if you really think about it from a structural standpoint, we don't want things to move. Uh, when things are moving it typically means that they're failing. So we're going to assume for the majority of this lecture series that everything that we are dealing with is fixed and not moving. What we're going to start talking about um, is the concept of static equilibrium. I didn't really understand the value behind static equilibrium until I started doing design and I realized that by making these simplifications and understanding static equilibrium I was able to solve a lot more complex problems that might have required me to um, do a really complex analysis and instead of doing that, I could just use static equilibrium and get a close to right answer. Again, engineering is about simplifications. Uh, we're not out here to get everything exactly perfect to the T in design because there's going to be errors down the road. Manufacturing errors, um, design errors, and if we spend a lot of time trying to perfect our design, we're never going to build a prototype. So this whole concept of static equilibrium is something that I've used multiple times throughout the design phase to go ahead and, and figure out what types of supports we need where in the aircraft or, or how we're going to structure the body or the wing. Um, all of this stuff uh, was super useful. So I really want to spend a lot of time um, talking about this and make sure that you guys understand um, how static equilibrium works. So we'll, we'll, we'll start out with this. We're going to draw, we're going to go back to physics and we're going to draw a simple, a simple mass. Here's a mass. This mass is sitting in a two-dimensional plane. We'll go ahead and put some axes on here. X and Y. And what we're going to be able to say is we know that in order for something to move, there has to be a net acceleration, right? So if we're looking at static equilibrium, what we're saying is this mass here is static. It is not moving, it has no net acceleration. Therefore, the sum of the forces acting on this mass have to equal zero, right? If they don't equal to zero, then I have a net force and the force is compi uh, comprised of a mass and acceleration. Therefore, I have a net acceleration. I don't want a net acceleration. I'm assuming we are in static equilibrium. Therefore, the net sum of the forces on this body, in order for it to be in static equilibrium, have to equate to zero. Here's what this means. For example, if I were to sit this mass right here, 
hold a mass in the air, let it go, it would obviously move, right? We have gravity, we have a gravitational force acting on the mass. That would cause it to move out of static equilibrium. It would be kinetically moving due to the acceleration by gravity. In order to stop that, okay, let's go ahead and draw that force. Mass times acceleration, gravitational acceleration expressed as G. In order to ensure that this mass is in static equilibrium, I have to apply an equal and opposite force such that the sum of the forces in the y direction equate to zero. So this is quite simple. If I have mg acting downward in the negative y direction, I simply must have a different force equal and opposite to mg in the, in the positive y direction. And now we are in static equilibrium. We're not moving. So this is the base concept for everything that we're going to do in, in static analysis, static equilibrium. All we're doing at the very crux of the matter is saying that the sum of forces, the x, y, z, whatever direction, have to equal zero so there is no net acceleration. Well, that's the very first concept we're going to start with. Um, I'm going to go ahead and introduce a couple of bits of nomenclature, talk a little on boundary conditions, and just make sure that we have this concept solidified um, so it becomes a lot easier for us to, to move on and, and start to add the complications that we're going to see uh, throughout this series.